This video is about full range drivers. Why are we making a video about full range drivers since we don't manufacture them anymore? Well, I'll tell you why. Recently, we've been getting a lot of inquiries regarding our horn augmentation systems, the horn one and horn two, wondering if they would help their full range speakers or full range drivers sound better in the treble, have a more coherent and intelligible mid range. And we say, sure, of course, it'll, it'll, of course it'll help. So what's a full range speaker? A full range speaker is a speaker designed to reproduce the entire audio frequency range. That's physically impossible. Um, let's take a piano, for example. If a piano were able to reproduce the entire frequency range, which a lot of people think it really does, it doesn't. It would have to have 120 keys and weigh almost 2,000 pounds. It would be huge. So with that said, let's discuss the goals of full range speakers. The goal here is to design a driver of moderate size, say anywhere from a three inch, yes, they make three inch full range speakers, all the way up to say 12, and they do make 12s as well. Um, mostly they're in the eight to 10 inch range that reproduces the entire audio frequency range or as close as possible to it. Um, a lot of them cut off around 50 hertz, 40 hertz, some reach 30 hertz, but they all claim to reach 20 kilohertz, which is the absolute top of the hearing frequency range. Uh, they can't do that. If they do reach there, and sometimes they do, um, they have beaming and cone breakup, which is not what you want to hear in your music. Uh, cone breakup occurs when the frequency that the driver can reproduce is beyond its size limitations. So let's just say that you have a very high frequency with a very short wavelength. The driver is bigger than the wavelength. It can't reproduce it. So how does it get around that? How do you get 20 kilohertz out of a four inch driver or five inch driver like this one here? The edge of the cone vibrates at a high frequency. The center vibrates at a higher frequency, but it's not operating coherently as one succinct driver. Okay, so let's discuss what we do about full range speakers. We use ones that are called extended range. This is an extended range speaker. It's a Mark Audio a CHR120. It will play to 20 kilohertz, but not cleanly. Same thing with here with the CHR90. The CHR120 will play very cleanly to say maybe, maybe 10 kilohertz. Um, we cross it over around two kilohertz. So in the crossover regions, let's say between two and say four or five kilohertz, it plays clean. So that's the goal here. Now, if you use a standard, say, eight inch driver, um, what happens then is if it's not extended range, and we'll talk about what makes it extended range, you end up with the crossover region between say, where you cross it over say two kilohertz and it's completely quiet in the crossover region, say down around, up around four or five kilohertz. If there's a spike in there, and there usually is on a standard driver because of like we discussed before, cone breakup occurs as the frequencies go up. You don't want to hear that in your recording. You'll hear that. It'll be maybe six to 18 decibels down in volume, but it'll be there and you're going to hear that in the recording as distortion. Um, also, some beaming occurs and interferes with the high-frequency driver. So, what makes a driver extended range? Usually, it's the cone profile. You'll notice this is kind of on the flatter side of, of conical. It's not super deep. Uh, you'll also notice that it's made out of a very, very thin magnesium aluminum alloy, which is extremely light. That allows it to play a lot higher because the cone is lighter. It can move faster and it maintains its integrity without breakup because it's a very stiff material. Anything else like paper or plastic tends to vibrate independently. This maintains its stiffness all the way out to say maybe even 10 kilohertz. So that's what makes it an extended range driver and that's why we use extended range drivers exclusively in our speakers versus say a 10 inch woofer or an 8 inch woofer that might be a dedicated woofer. This is more of a dedicated extended range driver. And we discussed why it's not a full range driver. So we avoid any drivers that cannot stay clean in the crossover region. 
That's why we use them. So we discussed extended range drivers. Well, what about the high frequencies? What do we do with those? How do we deal with that part of it? We deal with it with either a horn compression driver system, or we deal with it with a, what we're using now on our more expensive speakers are the high layer motion transformer, notably the BEMA TPL150H, which is a horn actually with the high layer motion transformer behind it extending the upper mid-range a lot lower than a standard, say, Mundorf air motion transformer would be able to do. So with that said, we take the best of both worlds here, which is extended range drivers paired with the transducer that will excel at high frequencies Eliminate the beaming problem because this is a controlled dispersion device. It takes the frequency range that it's comfortable with and keeps it within a certain dispersion pattern. In this case, it's a, a 90 by 60. Uh, the BAME, I believe, is a 90 by 30 dispersion. So it's controlled. So during the crossover between the extended range driver and the horn, that dispersion remains lined up and coherent. We also use a phase coherent crossover that lines up the phase differences between the two drivers, meaning phase, meaning alignment, like focus. Think of it like the focus of a lens in a camera. If you're taking a picture up close, for example, of something, and then you pan over to the next object that's, say, further away or to yourself, that camera changes focus. Well, you need to have that in your crossover region because otherwise what happens is the sound becomes defocused. So let's say the singer singing a low note and then they transition over to a high note. You don't want that focus of, of the singer's position and singer's tonality to change. So when it passes through the crossover region between the horn and the driver, they need to be lined up in phase, meaning in focus between the two. That's very important in crossovers. So that's the reason we use a two-way system. Now we've been inquiries come come in regarding three-way systems. That's probably a subject for another video. Um, let's just say breaking it up in three different pieces is not as coherent as leaving it in two separate pieces. Hard enough to line it up with a two-ray crossover to make it perfectly in phase, but you put one in the middle there you know, threes are crowd, as they say. So it's not as coherent in our opinion. You may reach a slightly deeper base, but that's not as important as what's happening in the mid-range. That's where all the music is at. So full-range drivers, extended-range drivers. What's in the name? 